guys after subscribing to this channel please make sure that you also press the bell icon so that no notification no new video of mine any educational video is missed by anybody to be start so i welcome one and all in this class tonight we have this oski volume 4 i hope everybody is able to hear my voice clear and just uh, please uh, be very very uh, attentive and uh, be very uh, you know swift in your response because <clears throat> we not uh, you know uh, going to wait a lot for your responses just keep answering as you see the questions and that way we will be saving a lot of time specifically for those students who will be uh, watching as a recorded session because of, uh, the the recording is always available as soon as the class uh, you know finishes my students who have not been able to attend the class i always give them a recording of the session uh, plus you can always fast forward the speed and watch it as many times as you want to it's always all my classes are available as a bundle in live class recording folder i hope everybody knows that you just go in my app just type in the search column go to the store first okay i'll just get tell you step by step because many students find it difficult to you know find out my um, courses so i'll just go slow and tell you once and for all just download my app the app is available on google play store it's available in the apple play store you can just go and download it there if you're having difficulties in searching for my app please feel free to approach me on my whatsapp number it is flashed on every slide okay over here right now also you can see it on the screen don't feel hesitant in approaching me i have no issues there's no need always to you know call you can just give me a message and i'll respond you back do not feel hesitant at all i would love to help you out okay that's one thing once you've downloaded my app you just go to the store okay and there is a search button okay there's a search column in fact just type down you know this uh, live class recording folder or simply live class you will be able to uh, you know there's uh, just one package of live class recording you will be gui you know gu uh, guided to that just go and purchase it and you will be able to see my classes all the classes that you've missed up till now all of them has been put together as a bundle plus you get ppts which i use in these classes uh, you know free over here over there to see as many number of times if you don't have time to watch my one hour long class you can just you know flip through the slides of the ppt and you are done all right so this was just an attempt to um, save time of all those uh, exam going students all right now let's begin with the oski tonight this is oski volume 4 i hope all the students who joined in today know that we have already done three volumes before the students who had just appeared in the practical batch they were prepared for at least three oski that was sufficient most of them they have called me back i have been so grateful so humbled by their messages that they have performed well because they got so much of practice here and they also found it you know easy because they got this feedback from all of us over here that it's not that difficult to um, crack through the oski no matter how difficult it seems like all right so let's begin with the first slide keep answering the moment you see the slide this is this is the oski which has just recently come in the february practical exam and uh, i am really happy to share these slides with you because i found them uh, you know very very simple and easy now for example now let's let's take this up uh, i keep telling you and guarding you with the fact that suppose you're not able to get enough information from the picture just read the case if you don't get information from the case just read the questions you will be able to you you will be guided for the answer here is one example so this image over here it was like it's white out image i cannot make out what it is showing right but i'll read the history with you a 28 year old naliparis woman presents to the opd with dull lower abdominal pain so it's a dull pain okay she's a naliparis woman for two months duration ultrasound abdomen reveals 12 into 10 cm sized so it's a big you know lesion heterocoit lesion with mesh like appearance now mesh like appearance is pretty categoric for dermoids but i'll still read further and minimal fluid in pelvis on top of that ca125 is very low tsh is 5.5 borderline high ldh afp hcg they are within normal limits now anybody who has attended my class which i took on um, ovarian tumors recently i told you that whenever a, a you know a young female comes to you you know pre menopausal age female comes to you with any cyst specifically a complex cyst please do not you know miss out on these three very important tumor markers which are afp ldh and beta hcg all right just do not miss out in fact you should not say beta hcg right or hcg okay because hcg tumor marker is different and beta hcg is different hcg usually has this alpha and beta subunit and this one is going to take up both so you will say hcg beta this thing ldh and uh, afp do not figure uh, do not forget them so they are within normal limits another important feature that points towards dermoid 
she underwent a laparoscopy with the finding depicted in the picture so here's the first question mentioned the most probable diagnosis do we have some volunteers to give me the answer come on guys this should be an interactive session and i shouldn't be waiting for your answers come on so the most probable diagnosis <clears throat> in this regard what is it what is your answer so according to me my answer will be a dermoid cyst the appropriate treatment for this case i would have done a lipotomy because you look at the huge size 10 12 into 10 cm okay 12 into 10 cm and the fact that it is heterochoic lesion uh, i wouldn't want to venture into just you know simply uh, Uh, aspirating out because this will not be aspirated it's got so much content of hair solid content sometimes even tooth i'd probably go in for a laparotomy and do a proper cystic scission okay cystectomy so for me uh, the most appropriate treatment will be laparotomy followed by cystectomy all right keep giving answers guys okay this is going to be very dull if i uh, you know show the pictures and answer myself the most common complication that comes with a dermoid cyst specifically during pregnancy according to the gestational age okay is torsion okay dermoid cyst uh, usually undergoes torsion otherwise also and specifically over here i would say that it will undergo torsion why because um, here you see that um, it's usually there in the first trimester and second see already the uterus is bulky when the uterus grows and becomes bulky it moves if the uterus was lying silently down still uh, dermoid cyst undergoes torsion and now here the uterus is moving separately and the cyst is also you know being moved because of the movement of the uterus so there's a very huge chance that dermoid cyst undergoes torsion and that to a, a dermoid cyst more than 7 cm we say is very essential to be in any cyst above 7 cm last time in oski we just did that right so any cyst above 7 cm usually it uh, has a tendency of uh, undergoing torsion and definitely dermoid we also call it mature cystic teratoma and uh, yeah it happens mostly in the first trimester or early second trimester that is where it gets torted the incidence of bilaterality and the incidence of malignant transformation is up here so that for you to remember so this is, looks like a mature cystic teratoma the dermoid cyst i'll go for a laparotomy for by cystectomy here they've gone a laparoscopy as you can see uh, most common complication is torsion mostly in the early first first trimester or early second trimester so there's a huge chance of malignant transformation of 1 to 3% malignant transformation as well and 10% uni bilateral most of them are unilateral guys and talking of those this one was easy to decipher and now i'll show you one image like this we'll be taking this up as well last but because here i don't i don't know many of you have taken stills from the videos if this is also one of them well this is a not a very uh, appropriately taken screenshot because um, well here to be very honest i'm not able to pick out what they're trying to show right so if you have any insights into it let me know because right now i'm keeping it on a hold this is a very poorly taken still if it was only a oski station it's a different thing but if it was a video you get video slides as well so this was not the right frame to be taken right so i'm moving on further but i will uh, we'll try to discuss it if anybody gets the answer of station 2 please let me know all right so now this was my slide 4 remember okay so slide 4 if anybody has an answer this is very obvious this is nothing to you know decipher it's very obvious given to you May, name the surgical procedure depicted in the picture mention the indications of this surgery and name four complications that can occur at the time of surgery name two other surgeries for the same condition so let's start with what is what do you think is a surgical procedure depicted in the picture where are my students tonight you're able to get my voice loud and clear guys can you can i just get a thumbs up everybody okay fine there are some answers now so please can you give me a thumbs up everybody who's able to see the slide and hear me as well i hope it's not just the slide and you alone i'm also there somewhere in between so if you can hear me let me hear. okay fine asha thank you so much for your response and yes yes very good thank you so much this is uh yes come on. any more response is very very easy question so i want a couple of more answers then we can uh, go further yes it is a see this is a tot there is something called tvt as well and this which is why i have got this slide for you so over here if you go through the vagina and you take this out of upper abdominal wall this is called tvt right transvaginal uh, tape right and this over here is the obturator foramen so any tape that's going from here and coming out from here that is trans obturator tape of the 
uh, for this see what are they slinging on it they're slinging the urethra on it so obviously this is supposed to be the next question's answer mention the indication of the surgery yes very good keep answering very good neelam I'm, I'm very very proud of you i'm very proud of all my students who keep answering before i even ask the question because you can see the questions right before you right Bratish, thank you so much so the indication for the surgery is sui as you have rightly said it's slinging the urethra with it right it's slinging the urethra so obviously something to do with now remember guys over here just let me clarify this once and for all stress urinary incontinence and overactive bladder okay both are supposed to be diagnosis after your urodynamics mostly after urodynamics okay so if somebody comes to you with cuffing and incontinence you cause a stress incontinence and if somebody comes to you with you know urgency and frequency with urine leakage that is just called as detrusor overactivity seemingly query query or or you can call it just urge incontinence as simple as that so with the history alone you will say stress incontinence urge incontinence but after urodynamics you'll call it stress urinary incontinence and you'll call it over active bladder get that thing absolutely crystal clear in your mind now that was number two now number three sui usually the treatment is surgical and overactive bladder usually the treatment is medical get that thing also clear though everybody who has seen my urogani lectures i think should have uh, this concept pretty clear already in their mind but just because there is a time to to tell you about this and your the, i'm seeing that these questions are asked pretty often urogynecology is not one thing which i'm expecting them to ask my uh, pg students but they are asking so it's my responsibility to teach you a little bit more than what uh, you know they have already asked because they can ask further as well now one one very important thing is that like i sto told you this thing before also tvt tot now they're not being used for some for the simple reason that this tapes and meshes and all these things are a big failure and because of which we are discouraging their use except of course for uh, abdominal sacrocolpopexy web mesh is still being used and it's still being anchored to the anterior longitudinal ligament as you know already so this is the uh, depiction of transvaginal tape and transobturator tape and as you can see it's going through the obturator foramen this goes this is actually done vaginally but it comes out of anterior abdominal wall which is very uh, you know a grotesque procedure i'd say now the next question is name four complications that can occur at the time of surgery just imagine where you're going you know absolutely just remember that every delicate structure is right there so you can injure you definitely can injure the bladder you can injure the nerve you can injure the artery but you have to be specific as neelam has specifically written that you can injure the obturator nerve at the same time you can also injure the obturator artery yes you can cause dyspareunia you can cause tape erosion mesh erosion you can cause permanent discharge you can cause a lot of trauma dyspareunia and you know a lot of bladder pain syndrome can come out of it so there are many answers for this name for complications it's your take your pick i've already given you i think six seven option uh, you know answers for name the four complications you have a lot of them i have compiled four name two other surgeries for the same condition this i would want my dear students to write quickly because you've, you've already prepared for your theory exam you're going in for your practical i'm sure all of you know the answers but just quickly write down the two surgeries which you would want to do apart from tot or tvt which surgeries would you name one is very easy i think i spoke in my last class which is very very important the first line in fact for, according to rcog recommendations uh is the bursch colpus suspension one i've already given you okay what about uh what about other surgeries mm, okay tvt i have shown you you can write on tvt smart enough very good kaushik what about other surgeries do you know any other surgeries for uh, stress urinary incontinence apart from bursch colpus suspension i knew it you people are going to say this is it safe enough to write it down here but it, in, in your OSCE, uh, in your uh, table viva, suppose your uh, viva goes on to this particular direction, do not name MMK because it's going to be difficult for you to explain it. Of course, uh, when you know what it, uh, what, what the surgery is all about, then it's, it's rather easier. But Birch Colpus Suspension, MMK, both are actually very difficult to describe because then you go into the rectovesical space and then you, uh, you know, uh, space space it out and then you would anchor it to the uh, uh, that fascia which is very close and it's very difficult to explain all these things in uh, specific senses because then they will ask you a lot about all that supports and support of the bladder support of the uterus and the fascia surrounding it and your viva is going to go in a very bad direction so it's always good to restrict yourself to easier things uh burst call suspension you have to speak there's no other way out but uh you can yeah you can name tvt as the other surgery over here 
but I have main, uh, mentioned another very important surgery which people would want to hear from you that is rectus sling surgery. It's the idea, the concept is very much the same as the TOT is because you're taking the rectus uh, fascia and then you're slinging it across the, um, you know, urethra and then you're pulling it up and anchoring it there. That's the idea. Okay, so here you have these uh, answers, injury to bladder, injury to adjacent blood vessels. You can call it obturator, uh, obturator nerve, obturator vessels as well. Urinary retention, you can have recurrent UTI, you can have tape erosion, you can have bladder pain syndrome. Yes, you have so many complications. So here, again, you have the questions right in front of you guys. I'll just read this thing for you. And now, this again is a question in which you cannot mess up because it's a history given to you, right? So they're not asking you to recognize anything. 55-year-old woman, P6L6, history of hysterectomy for uterovaginal prolapse, presents to you an OPD with a history of something coming out per vaginal. So what is this? What is this? It is a post hysterectomy wall prolapse, PHVP. Sometimes you can only get a patient comes to you with PHVP. So please, post hysterectomy wall prolapse is a very common, uh, uh, you know, short form used very often in many of your uh, standard textbooks. So please remember this and do not get confused. So yes, it's coming out per vaginum for the last six months. Name two surgical options for treatment. Of this patient. Now remember when I was speaking to you about wall prolapse, anchoring them to the uterosacral ligaments or mechal caldoplasty, they are supposed to be the prophylactic treatments. Correct? Correct? I'm asking you about therapeutic treatment because wall prolapse has already happened. Right? So what do you do? Mostly you will go vaginally. And what will you do here? You will do either of the two. Yes, excellent, excellent, Neelam. That's very nice, Asha. Very nice, Neelam. Uh, you know, more power to you girls. I'm very, very proud of you. Sacrospinal ligament fixation, SSF, right? And abdominal sacrocolpopexy. You can also have uh, sacrohistropexy going from below, but that's a very tricky, very, very tricky operation. So you can, you'll just stick to abdominal sacrocolpopexy uh, or you will say sacrospinous fixation. Absolutely. List any two complications associated with these procedures. I think in my last class, we spoke at length about sacrospinous fixation and its complications, right? You have inferior gluteal artery being uh, uh, damaged there and you have pudendal nerve being damaged there. Plus, you also have dyspareunia there. So I'll just mention these two complications here as well because we just spoke about sacrospinous fixation mostly in abdominal sacrocolpopexy uh, there is no as such a, uh, what do I say um, complication apart from the fact that it's a wall prolapse down there and you are fixing it from above so you already had one operation below and now you're slitting open the abdomen to reach the wall so in itself only abdominal sacrocolpopexy is a huge it's a big operation despite the fact that you do have a vaginal problem and a vaginal root available right since she's a 55 year old female she i we cannot say that uh you know dyspareunia will not be a problem to her so uh sacro, sacrospinous fixation would have been the best thing for her had she been a little you know maybe 76 or something or 68 or some some and or they would have written that she does not have a husband or something like that but the moment they say she's a 55 year old and you've not mentioned anything about her sexual life it's always wise to uh restrict the sacrospinal fixation but here they were only asked you to mention the surgical options so you can just mention sacrospinal fixation no problem List any two complications associated with these we've just mentioned. Name us a non-surgical treatment option for this condition. This I'd like to hear. A non-surgical treatment option of vault prolapse. Come on, guys. Quickly, quickly, quickly. So I have so many students in the class and I want everybody to just answer. Like I say, answer wrong, but please answer. The reason being, you will remember, be it your positive or negative response, you will always remember. Yes, absolutely. What else do you expect? It's a pessary that you have to put. That's great. Absolutely, guys. So this is the same thing over here. Pessaries will be the option. 